Hello, my name is Dr. Chan, Assistant Dean of Admissions here at the University of Utah School of Medicine. I'm excited today to talk to you about GPA and MCAT. All grades you receive for college credit are factored in your GPA calculation. If you have to repeat a course, both grades that you take for that course are calculated into your GPA. GPA and MCAT are really important factors that determine your readiness for medical school. Uh, let's talk about GPA first. If throughout your undergrad uh, education, you feel that your GPA is not as high as you want to, and you graduate, you need to do something after graduation. So what can you do? First, you can take a post back program. These programs are tailor-made and help students improve their you know, readiness in either biology, physics, chemistry, aspects like that. There's also other things called special master degree programs. We do not have one here in Utah, but this is where you get a master's in medical science, for example, and you are right in the same class as other medical students from the local medical school. You take the same courses and you get a grade. So I think those two options are great, but I always tell applicants that if you need to improve your GPA, you can always create your own post -bac program just by taking local uh, classes at your local university or college. You don't need to go into these professional programs and pay large sums of money. And obviously you can go back and take online classes as well. Our medical school, if you take a class online, we recognize that GPA. Okay, MCAT. All applicants are required to take the MCAT within three years of applying. We only take the most recent score. I recommend that if applicants take the MCAT and they don't like their score, retake it. The vast majority of people improve the second time they take the MCAT. So the new MCAT, there's a 2015 version uh, that placed a greater emphasis on the behavioral and social sciences. Why did they do that? Well, simply put, we in medicine, we have certain core principles that we, are, we know to be true. Everyone should be exercising. Uh, we should be eating in moderation. If you, you're not, you shouldn't do drugs. If you're prescribed a medication, you should take it as prescribed. We know these things to be true. Pretty basic, right? The problem is, is that how do you help a patient who believes that they don't have diabetes, who believes that a healthy meal is eating a McDonald's five times a day? Uh, who believes that smoking cigarettes is, quote, no big deal, end quote. So what we've learned is, is that we have all this medical knowledge, these principles that we know to be true. It's difficult sometimes to help patients get to that point. How do you help them as a doctor, as a medical student, to that first step to become healthy? So in our medical school, all of the medical schools, we have, we have been emphasizing more and more the behavioral and social sciences. How do you create a behavioral plan to help those type of patients? So the MCAT is testing that knowledge. That's why emphasis on behavioral sciences, psychology, anthropology, sociology is being emphasized at this level. Okay, let's pretend you take the MCAT. Again, as I said, if you get a score you don't like, go back and take it again. The vast majority of people improve. Everyone learns differently. Everyone has a different way of learning material. You need to find the best way for you to learn the material for yourself. Something to think about the MCAT, and this mirrors what happens in medical school, is that you, sample, you simply can't memorize a bunch of facts and regurgitate them. So I caution people, understand more, memorize less. The MCAT is more focused on how you reason, how you do critical analysis. And this is done in our medical school curriculum. Don't cram for the exam, all right? This is a very important test. I am shocked by how many people don't, cram, uh, don't study for the MCAT at all and then study for the night before. You can't do that. You can't treat this like a biology final or a biology quiz. This is a really important test. Set a regimented study time and stick to it. Get out a calendar, either digitally or a paper calendar, and write down what chapters you're going to review and what, when are you going to do them. Set a schedule and stick to it. All right, use practice exams. Incredibly important. There's a lot of material out there. Uh, so you can buy them at the store. You can buy them online. Um, I know if you go to your local pre-med office, they might have some practice exams you can use. Practice, practice, practice. Eliminate distractions. Clear your calendar out and give yourself time to study and prepare. Uh, again, I've seen medical students do this. They've actually block out times on Saturday, Sunday, on Friday night when they're going to study certain chapters and they stick to it. And stay on target. Uh, I know this is, you know, to keep on harping this again and again, but what happens in your preparation to, to take the MCAT the exact same preparation you will need to take step one. And that's a pretty important test you take in med school. All right, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about MCAT and GPA, some tips to improve it, and how medical school schools view it. I look forward to seeing your applications.